In today's day and age, handhelds come and go incredibly fast. You don't even know and there were two new released, but often they are also quickly forgotten. Last time I was very excited about new handheld coming out was when Steam Deck was appearing. It was something new, something fascinating, handheld PC for this cheap and it can do so much. I bought it and I'm loving it ever since. Since then many handhelds came out, too many I would say, but I haven't really felt the urge to buy any of them. I had my Switch, my Vita, my deck, so I was fine. I haven't felt the urge until I saw Odin 2 was coming out. I was very intrigued. Super powerful Android handheld for fairly cheap. Sounded like a great idea, so I bought it. And I gotta be honest, I'm glad I did. Cause the more I'm using it, the more I'm liking it. When I was younger, I always wanted to just attach screen and controller to my PS2 and take it anywhere I wanted. Unfortunately, I couldn't, cause it just wasn't possible. But nowadays it is. With something like Odin 2, it's incredibly easy to install PS2 emulator and it has more than enough power to emulate every single PS2 game full speed, even upscaled. That means it's gonna look even better than we remember, way better. High resolution, widescreen patches, 60 FPS hacks. The only limit is your imagination. This single feature would have made it worth it for me. But with modern technology, it can do so much more than that. PS Vita emulation is getting better every day. Same like Switch emulation. I'm loving both of them. They are not perfect, but they are still being actively developed and updated. So the perfection is being actively pursued. And it can be nicely seen on the latest update of PS Vita emulator, Vita 3K. They have introduced things like fractional upscaling and FPS hack and that means I can play for example Uncharted Golden Abyss with higher frame rates and at higher resolution than on PS Vita itself. Here I'm playing it and I'm loving every single bit of it. And it truly blows my mind that this is even possible. PS Vita and Switch emulators are fairly similar because they are being developed by same people this way I would love to send a huge shout out to all of them. You are doing great job over there, keep it up. And this is what I like the most about it. One moment I'm playing God of War, then upscaled Uncharted, and I can finish it off with some Astral Chain, all at one single device. What a time to be alive. And in case I feel there is something missing, I can still do all the regular native Android gaming stuff. Lately I have installed Alien Isolation, you know the AAA console game, they have ported it to Android officially, which I'm a big fan of, and I hope this trend will continue, cause it's very needed. I have seen there was a Resident Evil 4 and Village ported to iOS only, which is also incredible feat, but it sucks, cause I'm not able to play it on my Odin 2, and I think there are more games heading to iOS only, which is a shame cause Android needs them too. And even if it means I'm not gonna be able to play them on my Odin 2, even though I hope they're gonna change their mind, cause you know money, I'm still happy without it, cause of all the things it can do already. Also guys, like and subscribe if you are enjoying this video, it means a lot. Some might say, you should've just used your phone with a controller. And yes, I could've, but I haven't done that. Why? Because my phone is for my phony stuff, not for my gaming stuff, for that I have Odin 2. Let's also address the second elephant in the room, Steam Deck. You can get the base models of Deck and Odin 2 for pretty much the same price, so why not that one? Two main problems with the Steam Deck that I see are its huge size and a short battery life. I'm not gonna be telling you do not buy it, in fact I'll tell you buy it. Buy a Deck, buy a Vita, buy a Switch, buy them all. But I might be a bit biased at the end of the day because I'm a huge handheld enthusiast, I'm sure you know that. I can tell you anything, but you're still gonna do whatever you want because only you know what you need, not me. I know what I need. I need Odin 2 because it suits my needs. It's perfect size, not really far from Switch Lite, which I see as a perfect size for me. Great controls, great ergonomics, I've already made one Odin 2 video, check also that one, I went more in depth in there, 
This one is more like an updated video after about 3 months of usage. In those 3 months, I haven't been using it as much to be honest. Mostly because there is not much spare time left to play games anymore. I got my full time job, I'm making these videos. Plus my personality is kinda weird. When I focus on one thing, I cannot focus on anything else. I can listen and play to one song 3 days in a row on repeat. Same with handhelds. When I focus on one, I cannot focus on another one. But now, Odin 2 is in my focus. Mainly thanks to this channel subscriber, Alvaro. He pushed me to make more content about it. And I'm glad he did. Cause without him, I think it might have taken some more time. It's hard for me to get out of my Vita comfort zone. Out of my Vita shell. But Odin 2 certainly deserves it. It's a great device. Switch emulation is amazing. I've been playing games like Borderlands, Call of Juarez, Astral Chain, Crash Team Racing and most importantly also the new Prince of Persia, Lost Crown. Ubisoft finally decided that it's time for a new entry after 14 long years and thankfully they haven't disappointed me. It is an amazing 2D action platformer and it plays great on the Odin 2 even in 1080p resolution because you can do it with Switch emulation to play docked mode resolution in handheld mode otherwise it would be only in 720p and with strong Odin 2 chip it runs great even at 1080p this doesn't mean it's better than Switch of course it is not it cannot play all Switch games many are not playable but many are playable many great Switch exclusives like Super Mario Odyssey Super Mario Wonder Super Mario 3D World, even Breath of the Wild is playable, One X could be a bit slower, but at 540p it's very enjoyable, 540p that's like a Vita resolution, Breath of the Wild in a Vita resolution on Odin 2, yeah I like it. Plenty other games are playable for speed, but plenty games have also glitches or they are crashing straight away. Odin 2 is using Snapdragon chip, which means you can use different custom GPU drivers with different results. Turnip drivers, Adreno drivers, default driver. Each game is different and each driver performs differently with each game. Turnips in general have greatest compatibility, but some games just crash with them, so you gotta just use trial and error method. And some games will just crash no matter what you do. Same thing holds true for PS Vita emulator. Cause you can use exactly the same custom GPU drivers as for Switch emulator. As I said they are very similar. Wipeout 2048 was crashing with default and Adreno, but full speed even at 2x resolution with turnip drivers. So Sacrifice was also able to run even at 2x with turnip. Here and there some graphical glitch, but nothing major. Odin 2 is not gonna replace my Switch or Vita anytime soon. But it offers a great variety in terms of emulators available. Don't forget there is also WinLater, which is basically Windows emulator. It allows you to install EXE files on your Android. You definitely will not be able to play AAA PC games like on the Steam Deck, but it is a nice bonus on top of all the other things. I've been playing with it just for a while. I was trying to install Halo Combat Evolved, I did install it, but it didn't work for some reason. I was using Exagear at first, then I switched to Winlater, and I think there was some conflict in between them, because there were some weird errors popping up. I've seen videos with people playing Halo on Android, no problem. I just wasn't in the mood to troubleshoot it. I was in the mood to play some more PS2 emulation, because that's what I honestly enjoy about it the most. Full speed PS2 as well as full speed GameCube, Wii, Dreamcast, plus obviously 3DS, Vita, Switch, WinLater. It's all in here and it's all awesome. One thing that truly stands out for me is its standby mode. I think it is on par with Vita standby mode and that's really an achievement because Vita has incredibly great standby mode. I haven't touched it for like 10 days and the battery dropped like 3%. That's very impressive in my opinion, because as you might know, Switch and Steam Deck standby mode leaves a lot to be desired, to say the least. Another strong argument 
that makes Android handhelds in general more appealing than Windows handhelds is the interface of emulators and its ease of use. It was created for touch input in mind and it's absolute pleasure to use it. Whereas if you are dealing with Windows emulators, those were created with mouse in mind, they are not so easy to control with touch input instead of mouse. E3SX2 and PCSX2 are a great example of that, or even Dolphin or Yuzu. Only exception is Vita 3K, because that one has exactly the same interface on Android and PC, and I'm hoping that's going to change in the future. Odin 2 in 2024 is absolutely worth it, no doubt about it. And no, this is not sponsored video. Well, it is, but uh, it is sponsored by our channel supporters and members. Huge thanks to them, your support is greatly appreciated. Odin 2 base model is again available to order on their website. That's the cheapest version for $299. It will start to ship in early March. If I would buy Odin 2 again, I would definitely go for higher tier, at least the mid tier for $369. Because you have more RAM and more storage available. And I have the base model with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Link is in the description down below. I'm aware they were also released the Retroid Poker 4 Plus and RG 556. I can't really talk about those because I haven't tried them. One thing is for sure, they are way less powerful than this Odin 2 with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Thanks to you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out! Just to be insane